Hi guys, this is Rahul from Simply Learn and today we'll be talking about one of the fastest growing and second largest cloud computing platform in the market right now. I'm talking about Microsoft Azure. Now before we begin, let's talk about what we'll be covering in this video. First, we'll talk about why you should be interested in cloud computing, what exactly is cloud computing, what is Microsoft Azure, some of its services and the users of Azure. Now let's start with why you should be interested in cloud computing. Now let's say you have an idea for a revolutionary application. An idea that ticks both the boxes when it comes to good applications. One, it has great user experience. And two, it'll be highly profitable. Now for it to be successful, you'll have to release it on the internet. People need to use it, they need to spread the word, and then it'll become truly famous. However, for that, you're going to need servers, storage, developers, a dedicated network, and application security to ensure your application works the way it does. Now these are a lot of components and that's where the problem lies. There are two major disadvantages to this approach. The initial setup is very expensive and risky, which means this requires a huge amount of capital upfront to ensure that it works properly. And the downside is if your application does not become famous or it doesn't return as much as you expect it to, you're probably not going to get the money back, which means it provides a huge amount of risk. And then on the flip side, if it does become famous, your number of users have increased which means that you'll have to buy more servers and storage systems to keep up with your demand. And this problem can be solved with the help of cloud computing. Now that you know why you should be interested in cloud computing, let's go into the details of what exactly is cloud computing. Now, cloud computing is basically a platform that gives you access to a number of computing resources. And this is possible with the help of the internet. Now, as a user, all you need to do is go to a cloud service provider through your laptop or your computer through the internet of course, connect to that cloud service provider and then there you go, you have access to computing resources. Now computing resources may include you know serverless computing, virtual machines, storage and so much more. Now let's dig a little deeper. Now basically these cloud service providers actually have massive data centers. Now in these data centers what you have are hundreds of servers. Also included are storage systems and mainly several organizations critical components. So these are very secure safe locations where a large amount of data is stored hence the name data centers. Now it is to these data centers that users actually connect to collect their data or use it. So actually users can access any service based on their requirement. Now like I told you there's a number of services the user can use. For example now if you want a notification every time someone sends you a message or perhaps once you get an email you need a copy of it created. Now for all of this there are services and most importantly almost every cloud service provider has this option where users only pay for the service that they use. So there's no charge upfront where they tell you that you need to pay X amount of money so that you can use our services. You're only paying for the amount of time that you're using these services. Now cloud computing is used for a wide variety of reasons. Firstly there's machine learning and data analysis. Now basically there are services that analyze your data and tell you how you can work with this data better. Then there's data storage and backup, streaming media content. For example, did you know that the shows that you watch on Netflix, actually all of them are in the cloud. So you're connected to the internet and you browse through Netflix and you get access to the videos. These are possible with the help of cloud service providers. There's creating and testing applications, automating software delivery, which is a component in DevOps and hosting blogs and applications. So now what is Azure? What's the big cloud service provider all about? So Azure is a cloud computing platform provided by Microsoft. Now it's basically an online portal through which you can access and manage resources and services. Now resources and services are nothing but you know you can store your data and you can transform the data using services that Microsoft provides. Again all you need is the internet and being able to connect to the Azure portal. Then you get access to all of their resources and their services. In case you want to know more about how it's different from its rival, which is AWS, I suggest you click on the top right corner and watch the AWS versus Azure video so that you can clearly tell how both these cloud service providers are different from each other. Now, here are some things that you need to know about Azure. It was launched on February 1st, 2010, which is significantly later than when AWS was launched. It's free to start and has a pay per use model, which means, like I said before, you need to pay for the services you use through Azure. And one of their most important selling points is that 80% of Fortune 500 companies 
use Azure services, which means that most of the bigger companies of the world actually recommend using Azure. And then Azure supports a wide variety of programming languages, the C Sharp, Node.js, Java, and so much more. Another very important selling point of Azure is the amount of data centers it has across the world. Now, it's important for a cloud service provider to have many data centers around the world because it means that they can provide their services to a wider audience. Now, Azure has 42, which is more than any cloud service provider has at the moment. It expects to have 12 more in a period of time, which brings its total number of regions it covers to 54. Now, let's talk about Azure services. Now, Azure services have 18 categories and more than 200 services, so we clearly can't go through all of them. It has services that cover compute, AI and machine learning, integration, management tools, identity, DevOps, web, and so much more. You're going to have a hard time trying to find a domain that Azure doesn't cover. And if it doesn't cover it now, you can be certain they're working on it as we speak. So first, let's start with the compute services. First, virtual machine. With this service, what you're getting to do is to create a virtual machine of Linux or Windows operating system. It's easily configurable. You can add RAM, you can decrease RAM, you can add storage, remove it. All of it is possible in a matter of seconds. Now let's talk about the second service, cloud service. Now with this, you can create a application within the cloud and all of the work after you deploy it, deploying the application that is, is taken care of by Azure, which includes, you know, provisioning the application, load balancing, ensuring that the application is in good health and all of the other things are handled by Azure. Next up, let's talk about Service Fabric. Now with Service Fabric, the process of developing a microservice is greatly simplified. So you might be wondering, what exactly is a microservice? Now a microservice is basically an application that consists of smaller applications coupled together. Next up, Functions. Now with Functions, you can create applications in any programming language that you want. Another very important part is that you don't have to worry about any hardware components. You don't have to worry what RAM you require or how much storage you require. All of that is taken care of by Azure. All you need is to provide the code to Azure and it'll execute it and you don't have to worry about anything else. Now let's talk about some networking services. First up, we have Azure CDN or the Content Delivery Network. Now the Azure CDN service is basically for delivering web content to users. Now this content is of high bandwidth and can be transferred or can be delivered to any person across the world. Now, these are actually a network of servers that are placed in strategic positions across the world so that the customers can obtain this data as fast as possible. Next up, we have Express Route. Now, with this, you can actually connect your on-premise network onto the Microsoft Cloud or any of the services that you want through a private connection. So the only communication that happens is between your on-premise network and the service that you want. Then you have Virtual Network. Now with Virtual Network, you can have any of the Azure services communicate with each other in a secure manner, in a private manner. Next, we have Azure DNS. So Azure DNS is a hosting service which allows you to host their DNS or domain name system domains in Azure. So you can host your application using Azure DNS. Now for the storage services. First up, we have disk storage. With disk storage, you're given a cost-effective option of choosing HDD or solid state drives to go along with your virtual machines based on your requirements. Then you have blob storage. Now, this is actually optimized to ensure that they can store massive amounts of unstructured data which can include text data or even binary data. Next, you have file storage, which is a managed file storage and can be accessible via the SMB protocol or the server message block protocol. And finally, you have queue storage. Now with queue storage, you can provide durable message queuing for an extremely large workload. And the most important part is that this can be accessed from anywhere in the world. Now, let's talk about how Azure can be used. Firstly, for application development, it could be any application, mostly web applications. Then you can test the application, see how well it works. You can host the application on the internet. You can create virtual machines, like I mentioned before. With the service, you can create these virtual machines of any size or RAM that you want. You can integrate and sync features. You can collect and store matrices, for example, how the data works, how the current data is, how you can improve upon it. All of that is possible with these services. And you have virtual hard drives, which is an extension of the virtual machines where these services are able to provide you a large amount of storage where data can be stored. Now let's have a look at what we've learned so far. 
In this video, we spoke about why you should be interested in cloud computing, what exactly is cloud computing, what is Azure, some of the services that Azure provides, and how you can use Azure. And with that, we've reached the end of another video. I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.